Is there a feeling on the part of the U.S. as Blinken makes this eighth trip to the Middle East since October 7th that a ceasefire is closer or potentially farther away as the, because of the results of this weekend? I think we're sort of basically at the same place we've been for the last two weeks. There was some, as we've talked about before, some initial hope uh, on a Friday afternoon. Biden came out, talked about the ceasefire agreement, that, that there could be some movement. I don't know that this weekend's events really change any of that dynamic. I mean, one of the things that I was thinking about was this operation, um, as impressive as it was from a military standpoint, does not get you really any closer to a diplomatic solution, which is what we need here um, in order for, for this ceasefire fire to, to move forward. And you heard Secretary of State uh, Antony Blinken there talking about the need to put pressure on Hamas by, uh, by the other countries in the region. And that is something that so far hasn't worked. So, you know, I don't think we're expecting a breakthrough here, although um, one could always uh, hope for something like that. What's the sticking point? We saw the U.N. Security Council endorse a resolution today. Uh, obviously, the Biden administration has. Hamas says it endorses this in principle but it must be a permanent ceasefire. Right. So who's holding this up? Well, I think both sides have their incentives uh, here. From the Israeli perspective, obviously, you don't want to commit to something uh, that's going to uh, restrain or curtail your ability to continue to carry out military operations if you feel that that's mm -hmm. necessary. And from Hamas's perspective, they want, uh, they want sort of this process to be baked in. They want this to be a permanent ceasefire for this to lead to the end of Israeli military operations in Gaza. And uh, Israel and, and Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, still feel that the eradication of Hamas has not been achieved and that needs to happen yeah. uh, before any kind of durable ceasefire can be put in place. Dan, thank you. Bloomberg's Dan Flatley getting us rolling this evening on Balance of Power as Donald Trump holds his first major campaign rally since his guilty verdict in New York. Appearing over the weekend outdoors in 100-degree heat in Las Vegas, the former president making a direct appeal to service workers. For those hotel workers and people that get tips, you're going to be very happy because when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips, people making tips. Those people that have jobs in restaurants, whatever the job may be, a tipping job, uh, we're not going after for taxes anymore. Joining us now is Bloomberg's Texas Bureau Chief, Julie Fine, who had an eye uh, on the rally and is watching the campaign for us always. Julie, it's great to have you here. I could talk about some of the more inflammatory rhetoric that the former president used, including the fact that uh, his teleprompter stopped working out there. But for the Bloomberg audience, this is pretty interesting to be going after taxes on tips, knowing that Joe Biden has to bring home that culinary workers union on the Las Vegas Strip to be able to take the state of Nevada. Does this become a real campaign issue? This is a very big campaign issue. And of course, this is a way to directly appeal to voters and say, this is exactly what I am going to do. However, as you know, there are a lot of steps that will need to be taken for that to actually become a reality. But like you said, I have spent quite a bit of time in Nevada on this campaign. I will tell you that cost of living is top of mind for the voters. So the president going there, which is likely to be one of many trips, the former president and President Biden has gone there as well to really try to get those electoral votes in what could be a very close state. On the subject of President Biden, Julie, his son, of course, has been in trial in Delaware on criminal uh, gun charges. The verdict, uh, the jury began deliberations today. We'll resume again tomorrow. We could potentially have a verdict before Tuesday is out. How should we think through the political ramifications for the president? Well, first of all, the president, as you know, will be heading to Italy this week. This will be a question for him on the campaign trail. Basically, whatever happens either way, there will be ramifications for the president. President. However, if he is found guilty, if Hunter Biden is found guilty, this will certainly be with him for some time. Interesting to point out here, Hunter Biden not taking the stand. That was pretty much expected. But again, this jury still out right now. That happened earlier today. So obviously taking some time to think about this one. Well, that's for sure. Is this something we should be covering in the same breath, uh, Julie? I'm just trying to get a sense of where we're going here with a former president's legal troubles impacting an active presidential campaign. What does Hunter Biden impact? 
Well, I think what will happen here is many Republicans will talk about the problems. Are they apples to apples? Well, that is certainly for right. voters to decide, but the Democrats certainly will say that is not the case. You're talking about a family member and the former president himself, but certainly something that both sides will be bringing up on the campaign trail.